Once you've laid the footprint and the tent down, you can choose to stake it out completely. And I, I like to do that. It just makes, for me, the setup easier, especially if I'm doing it by myself or in windy conditions. But you can stake it after you've erected the tent. But doing it, what you want to do, take the loop from the tent and the corresponding loop from the footprint, run your straight stake through both, and angle the stake into the ground. And then continue and do that to all of the five locations stretching out the, the tent to maximize the shape. When you're just setting up the first time, un unload everything, just spread it out on the place you're going to set it up. And what you should have with the Sweet Dreams will be a included fabric footprint, your inner tent or sleeping room, your fly sheet, your full bag with poles, stakes, which should also include your instructions and guidelines, and the gear lock. What I do first is grab the, uh, the footprint and you can actually lay it down and orient it the way you wish uh, on the site right off the bat. There is going to be one red strap, the rest of them being black, and I would refer to this as the back of the, uh, the tent for the setup. So depending which way you want to have it, angle that towards the rear. That's what I'm going to do here. So the footprint's been laid out, and as I mentioned, I've got the red tab facing what I'll call the back of the tent. There's also a corresponding red strap on the tent itself, matching those up. And I just pull the, the tent over top of the footprint and stretching it up to, to match the same shape. In the frame, you'll actually have two poles that are black, and they'll be your main frame um, forming, and you'll see the setup how they're used and then a second set of all shot quartered together a red frame. Just make sure when you're assembling your poles, as always, the inserts, the ferrule inserts are fully connected. Build the two black pole frames, just lay them in a crossing pattern over the tent. And starting in whichever corner you choose, preferably with the uh, pole that's riding high, insert the grommet, the first clip, and then follow around to the opposite corner, other end of the pole, grommet into the, with the pull tip and I just leave it like that. It's all staked up and then I repeat on the second pull. Again, if you're doing this with two folks, you can work opposite end of the poles and have it up, have it up in uh, half the time. And at this point, the main frame is up and I'll make all the black webbing connections. So you can kind of see black webbing, black clip versus the red. So all the black ones I'll make on the tent at this point. At the top, you'll have dual clips on the one web. And in the case of the larger tent, um, if you're shorter person, like myself, you'll actually open up the door of the tent to step in to give you access here. Of course, don't have to do it. Take the two uh, clips, and they clip to the outside pole, sandwiching the lower pole between the, between the two of them. And that's the proper set. So what I've done, I've assembled the, the red frame portion of the tent, and it's the, with the hub and all everything shot corded to it. Um, what you'll have is two long extensions, one short, Take the short and it goes to the red webbing at what again, what I'm calling the back of the tent. Make the insert into the grommet. And I always follow up and attach the first clip. Then you take the two uh, longer extension ends and fit them into the grommet. And they're found at what would be the top of the vertical main door. And then now you're attaching all the, the red webbing and clips. And again, you're sandwiching the lower pole by clipping to the outer pole in all locations. What this ends up giving you is an extremely stable structure. The 
some of the features in, in design of the Sweet Dream uh, series. So as you can see, both of them have a vertical large main door and they'll be protected by a two-point vestibule. So excellent storage, what I call them is the foul weather entry, so you can come in pouring rain conditions, peel off the wet stuff so nothing wet goes in. We've got a back door as well, uh, that's more fair weather entry so that on uh, the sunny days or uh, when it's not raining, you can open and access and get right into uh, the sleeping area. The tents were designed, the dimensions such that the two-person fits a full-size blow-up clean air bed such as our Rio Grande. And behind me, the four-person will actually fit two of them side by side. Uh, both of them using full aluminum frames and what kind of is unique about them, there is a three-point uh, machined aluminum hub on the back portion of the tents and those have existed for um, tent designs for a number of years. What's unique about these is that they actually have a uh, angled or pre-bent shape to them, um, which allows this unique shape to uh, be the result. It gives you a relatively or almost a vertical back wall, and two things that's doing, it's maximizing the internal space. It also is great if you're in windy conditions, you can angle that into the wind and it'll deflect the wind quite well, even on the larger four-person tent. It also allows the extension pieces that come around to, to give the point, uh, point uh, extensions on the, door, on the tent itself and uh, that vertical door that I mentioned at the very beginning. So again, maximizing your internal space. A uh, combination of no sea and mesh and a breathable fabric, so it's giving good climate control. And then on the fly sheet itself, you have a high position peak venting so that even if you have to seal yourself off completely in the warmer conditions, you can still get airflow as a result. Um, the fly or the floor is using uh, 25 millimeter uh, coating levels, and the fly sheet will use 2,000 mil coating levels. So rain issues will not be a problem with these things. Okay, now I'm going to put the fly sheet on, and as we've done with the footprint and the tent itself, find the one red web, uh, and that's going to again match up with the red webbing that's at the, again, what I'm calling the back of the tent. So just walk it to the back. You can make your buckle connection. And then once it's attached, it makes it easy to stretch your fly sheet up and over. Same process for either size tent. At this point, it's in position, just peel back the fly to expose these pole pockets. And what you're going to do, I just stick my finger in, and I'm going to pull them forward, and then just fit that over top of the pole extension from the frame. Okay, so those are now in position. On the sides of the fly, you'll have the guy lines, and by the way, the ropes are supplied, windy conditions, please use. On the underside, you've got the, the Velcro. Take that, just wrap it around the pole, and the corner clip or buckle, make that connection. And on the side of the flies, the toggle that attaches to the side of the inner tent. So. From the fly, take the toggle, pop through the ring, and in the later steps you'll see where you'll actually stake it out. So I've put the fly on, I've staked it out in all locations. The last thing I'm going to emphasize is the use of the guy lines, which are included. Um, without using guy lines, if you were to leave your site for a period of time, or just you get a stormy night, you are susceptible to tent damage. And that can be totally uh, handled and, uh, by just being uh, proactive, attaching the guy lines, and just simply staking them out. And this is almost a must and imperative that if you're leaving your site for any period of time, this just adds tremendous strength to the structure. And any windstorm that's going to do damage to that means you probably shouldn't be in the tent anyway. Enjoy your tent. Sweet dreams.